I've seen tons of videos about ram pumps out there, but I haven't seen a lot of videos actually putting it into practice for their farm, for their homestead. So today you're going to learn and you're going to see in action how it's done, what I do, how the ram pump works, how we take water from down in that pond and we pump it clear up way up there. So come along today. We're going to be working on two ram pumps. We're going to have some fun. Hopefully I can get it all done today. There's one thing to see it. It's another thing to put it into practice. You've got a creek or a pond on your property. Odds are you can do this. Hey guys, it's Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Woo! It's a little chilly and it's beautiful and sunny out here today. Lots of stuff going on. We're going to be working on the water system among other things. We've got dad's old tractor loaded up here. Say bye bye. We never did get to put the bucket on that thing. Um, dad said, ah, I just go on and sell that tractor. I, I don't need it. So why would I waste the money putting a, a, a new bucket on it uh, if he wanted to sell it anyway? So we ended up selling the tractor. I got to deliver that later this afternoon. Our baby chicks are out here. I say baby chicks, they're getting to be big boys and girls. Our uh, pastured meat birds are probably around, I'm going to say three and a half pounds, four pounds, something like that. We're going to put some food in. I just moved the coop and I've been moving it throughout the yard. As you can see, the yard's a little bit of a mess, but man, this spring, it's just going to blah, it's going to explode with growth. So we'll feed the chickens real quick and then we'll take you down to the pond and show you what's going on. We're actually extending the watering system from this pond way down here. You can't see it. <laughs> Hold on. Let me moonwalk right there. <laughs> so we're going to extend our watering system from our ramp pump from the pond way down there, way up here to water our cows and not have to worry about it. It's going to be super cool guys. So come along as we extend that watering system and we expand the ramp pump system on the other side of the farm, which is just about a half a mile away. All right. Woo. There you go, birdies. Chow down. All right, guys, welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm. Today's gonna be pretty cool, pretty fun day. So our ram pump system again is down in this pond and we're pumping all the way up this hill. We've got about six foot of drop ahead of the ram pump. And we'll go down there and we'll show you that here in just a minute. And this is how we're watering our cattle here on the farm. So currently the cows behind the house, which is behind the camera here, they're all watered off of my well. Well, I want water to come passively. I don't want to spend the money to pump the water to the cows and I don't want to pump my well dry either. So what we do is we're using a ram pump system, which is a totally passive system using gravity and uh, water pressure to pump water uphill to our cattle. And we're going to put in some really interesting little uh, valves float valves right here. We don't have a very, very cold winter here in North Carolina where I live. So freezing is pretty much not an issue as long as the ram pump is moving water. The first thing I got to do on this fairly chilly day, it's about yeah, 48 degrees, something like that, is I got to set this poly line out so that it heats up and it's easier to unwind, unroll. And today we'll be running approximately 1000 feet of water line right along the edge of the ground here. And uh, there's a reason behind all this. This is a temporary water setup for us uh, prior to building our permanent water setup. And we plan on a potential solar system for our permanent water setup. 
But for now, this will get us by, and this stuff is 18 cents per foot. So 180 bucks buys all the poly line that I need to water my animals all over the farm. I mean, it, it's super, super cool. We'll take you down, we'll show you the ram pump, and you can see all this comes off like an old phone cord. So I've got to stretch it out and attach it. And we'll use couplings to attach right here. We're using the heavy duty. Uh, this is 100 and actually we're using 100 psi and we're using 160 psi but we're not using uh, irrigation pipe this is heavier duty pipe for 100 psi and this is a low pressure system it's interesting it's fun if you want to geek out on this stuff this is how i'm doing it here on the farm and it's how you can do it on your place and it's interesting even if you don't have a farm we'll take you down we'll show you the ram pump and i'm going to get busy stretching this stuff out i've got a thousand foot of pipe to unravel and straighten out <sighs> Whew, what a job. <laughs> that little white thing you see is the ram pump. Around here is the inlet. And I drove a piece of pipe, fence pipe, right down here in the pond. And there's a little float on top there. You can see that little float. That's my own little design to keep it up about 16 inches off the bottom where the cleanest water is. And we have a filter system on this. And we'll show you how to build a filter system in the upper pond here in just a minute. So we've been up there working a little bit. We're back down here. This is the inlet. The pipe runs from right in here under the dam through the culvert pipe and down here to the ram pump. Now let's go down here and I'll explain how it works to you. This, my curious friends, is a ram pump. There's a pipe that goes up all the way up the hill here. We've got about six to seven feet of drop. For every foot of drop on that pipe, it's called the drive pipe, for every one foot it goes down before it goes to the ram pump, it will push up seven feet. So if you do the math, simple math, five times seven, seven times seven is 49. So if it's 49 feet from the bottom of this creek to the top of our hill is about 45 feet. This pump will pump water anywhere on our farm. That simple, it's just that simple. Now it pumps very, very slowly. There's a series of check valves in here. And if you wanna learn a little bit more, I'll post a link down below to Seth land to house channel. Seth is a good guy. He builds these. There's a little pressure tank inside here. There are two little valves that go clickety clack and it pumps water slowly up the hill. And you can see it's just using the force of gravity and water and pushing it up the hill. There's an inner tube inside that and that tube holds that pressure and pumps it right on up the hill. Way cool, way, way cool. So we'll have again nearly I guess close to 1500 feet of line running off of this ram pump. We're going to start a ram pump on the other side. It's already in the creek. It's set. It's ready to rock and roll and it's going to be going into the other pond. I'll show you how we build the filter and we'll start filling up another tank on the top of the hill. That's a ram pump. Let's take you up top and we'll show you how much flow we get. This ever not so impressive amount of water flowing from this pipe is what the ram pump is pushing up the hill. Now, it may not seem like some miracle of modern science to you, but it's enough. It's enough to save us from having to have power to pump our water. It's enough to keep the cattle out of the watershed, keep manure out of the watershed, and do what we're supposed to do to protect the environment. This pasture right here was grazed about hmm, three weeks ago, and it's coming back fabulous. In about three more weeks, we'll move the cows down from where they're being watered up here on the top of the hill, back down here to behind the house or in front of the house excuse me so it's not some miracle it's just enough and that is enough to get by it's about saving it's about not <laughs> destroying our watershed really so we're going to take that little trickle and we're going to put a water tank right up here and we'll hook it up with a float valve and we'll be totally squared away and the cows will have plenty of water right there and we're going to put several water tanks along the way so let's go up there and hook it up i've got about 500 foot of pipe to run up that way. Here's what I'm doing. I'm taking the pipe and I'm sticking it down through where the knots are on our wire, where the uh, termination knots are, and then I'm unraveling it and straightening it out down there so it's easier to use here in about 15 or 20 minutes when I get up here and start working on this. The whole process today is gonna to take me about four hours. And this time of year, we really have to race the sunlight. So just so you guys have a little more detail on what's going on, uh, these are our cows. Awesome. These are black Angus.
Now I've drug up a water tank. I had a water tank sitting up there. I drug it down here. Cows are so curious. You see where that's sitting? Wait about 30 minutes when we're up here actually trying to put water in it. The cows are so curious and they act like they're starving to death and every cow's got to get in the same spot at the same time every time. <laughs> It's pretty funny, but that'll be knocked over and smeared all over the pasture until I can get some water in it. So really, we're probably going to turn the water on and then let it get dark outside and we'll let it fill up overnight because the cows will just tear it all to pieces. A mob of cows will break stuff. They'll tear stuff up. And you see, our gate is right here. Our water is far away from our gate, probably 40 or 50 feet away from our gate. We don't want to make a mud hole in wintertime. It's wet. There's going to be a bit of disturbed ground right where the water tank is. And we'll fix that area by rolling hay out on it. But there's going to be some disturbed ground right here where the water tank is. Cool? You know what they say, devil's in the details. So I've got a couple tools. I don't have a couple tools. Where'd that tool go? There it is. <laughs> devil's in the details, guys. So this pipe comes with crimped ends on it. You can see that end is crimped flat. So I've got to cut that end off. Got one tool underneath my armpit here. Armpit makes a great tool too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that end off just like so. And this is just a simple poly pipe cutter. Hopefully the cows stop finding me so interesting. <laughs> they must think they're gonna get a treat. Anyhow, I clip that end off right there. I'll put that in my pocket. We'll put that in the trash bucket over on the, uh, uh, not side by side, over on the ATV. We're using ATVs now. A lot of ATV action going on here on the farm. So I have a coupling in my back pocket right here and I've got all my tools that I'll need we're actually going to be instead of using hose clamps we're going to use zip ties so we're going to mash this uh, barbed coupling down in here so I'm just going to press these together if you've never seen this done it's a miracle <laughs> it's not a miracle it's pretty simple uh, we'll press these barbed fittings together on this half inch again cold weather cold weather makes it difficult it takes some strength to push these guys together and you want to be sure that you're not kinking oh goodness your hose you don't want to kink this hose right here it will provide resistance even though this is a low pressure system at some point we may end up digging trenches and burying this and it'll be a high pressure system at that point if we get our well set up now i've got a couple zip ties in my back pocket and uh, instead of using hose clamps because this is something that we're going to take apart at some point in the future maybe years down the road but we're using these all-weather zip ties and i'm going to put them on as tight as i possibly can with my hands if I can find the last zip tie there it is and then we'll do uh, we'll use the zip tie gun and if you haven't seen this man guys you're not living right if you're not, if you don't have one of these in your in your arsenal so that's as tight as I can get that zip tie we can get a couple more clicks out of it we use our zip tie tool this is data shark it's a zip tie uh, tool it pulls it tight and cuts it just like that take my scrap put it in my pocket again it pulls it tight inside there okay we're gonna do it again hopefully you guys can see just grabs it just like so pulls it tight I got two more three more clicks BAM cuts it now our joint is nice and snug and shouldn't come apart we're gonna run this to the tank up there so the way this is gonna work it's quite simple quite easy the ram pump is down in the woods right down in that layer holler right there <laughs> and we're going to run the pipe straight into the through pipe here the culvert pipe that runs into the pond so that pipe goes through there and out there and we want our float and we're going to build a float system real quick to be out there we've got an anchor and a float i'll show you so we're trying to have the intake for the ram pump about that deep that's the goal not on the top so it's picking up surface debris and not on the bottom so it's sucking up garbage from the bottom i've got an idea here for an anchor system and a float system that i think is going to work great so we'll show you i'm going to build the filter real quick show you how it's done got a macho man randy savage body slam of the camera by the poly pipe Brr. this might make the blooper reel this is our filter system our filter system consists of schedule 40 pvc four inch schedule 40 pvc pipe and we are going to actually cut this pipe right here we have a reducer we're going to take it down from four inch i believe that takes it down to two inch but it's probably made in some foreign country and it doesn't say it doesn't say what it is but we've got a step down and then we've got to step it down to here and we have a three quarter inch barbed 
connection point right here. You could put some uh, Teflon tape on here if you wanted to. I, there's no use. This is low pressure, super duper low pressure. So this guy attaches to this two inch reducer. So this is a two inch down to one inch, and this is a one inch to three quarter, okay? So lots of reducers, lots of, uh, I guess, Mickey Mousey kind of stuff going on here, but I'll show you how it all goes together because it's really super sweet how this system is gonna work. Safety glasses. So that's how long I want it. I'm gonna put a piece of screen over top of this, okay? I'm gonna speed it up as I assemble everything. I picked this guy up at Turtle Island. What a beautiful knife. This is Osage Orange Handle. This is a handmade knife. Man, how awesome is that to be able to take something away like that? I won it in a silent auction for charity. It makes me feel good every time I pull it out of my pocket. Now, we're just gonna take this and we're gonna build a cone around here. I'm gonna take a little bit of it, stretch it out here, take my knife again and do a little cutting. We've been doing filter systems a little different. We drilled holes all through this and then wrapped it in the in screen. I think there's a simpler way and I'm trying a simpler way and if this doesn't work, I'll let you guys know. We'll give it some time. Um, all I'm gonna do is double wrap this a couple times around the end, nice and snug, just like so. Okay, and that should keep all the trash out. Here's where having a partner would be helpful. <laughs> Somebody to hold this for me or a vice. Maybe we'll install a vise on the back of the ATV. Sounds like a good fun project. Okay, put this guy in place. I'm gonna hold it with my other holding tool. <laughs> uh -huh. There we go. Ooh, dizzy PVC glue, man. Don't breathe that stuff. I was holding my breath the whole time. Okay, now we got this critter on here. We'll slide him down just where we got a good bite, just like that. Give each one of our zip ties a little pull, tighten it as tight as we can. Man, this thing's awesome. Boom. Never get it that tight on your own. If you can get it on there. <laughs> Boom. I'm gonna bring this guy together, fold him in several places, just like so. And we're gonna give it a twist, and that's our filter. That's it. That's simple ingenuity, man. Uh, the filter cost me, <laughs> the filter portion of the filter cost me 45 cents. The pipe was the most expensive part and everything's going up in the stores. So that's how we build the filter. That's how I'm trying mm -hmm. my new filter system. Back to the zip tie tool. Snug it up. Look at that. Never get it that tight on your own. We're going to go ahead and put two zip ties on the end of that and that's the filter. Now, what happens is these filters will get clogged up with not debris so much as just pond scum, pond slime, pond scum, whatever you want to call it. That's what it'll get built up with. So be advised. And you want to put a filter on here because you don't want to suck a fish or something like that up on it or a salamander or whatever. Um, that ought to be plenty to feed a three quarter inch piece of poly. Awesome. Now we'll grab our poly pipe and we'll press this on. Oh man, that stiff stuff. Oh boy. Isn't life grand? There we go. <laughs> this is how you get farm fit right here. Oh, doing your push ups. Got a GoPro down here. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. Straighten this pipe out a little bit. Where it lays flat in the water, up, up and away. That's a workout right there. There we go. This is our intake for the pond. Again, we want to be about 16 inches deep. So about right here is where I'm going to attach our float system. Let's go build that real quick. I've said it before and I'll say it again with a little determination, guys. You can do anything. You can accomplish any task. Now, we've come up with these buoys, this buoy system. These are cheap. They're like four bucks on Amazon. I'll post links to them just so you guys can buy them. And just so you know, part of the way that I pay for the farm and part of the way that I make a living here on the Stony Ridge is through those links that I post to stuff. So when I teach you how to build something or do something, um, 
or if you're shopping there's a link down there to my amazon page i don't you don't buy the stuff from me but uh it's just one way that feeds the cows man that to be honest with you that's total transparency there so here we are this is our float system uh i'm going to simplify it for you after i cut the string here this is just paracord It'd be better if i had a something to burn this paracord with but i don't so i'll run the paracord right through this ring of floats okay and we're going to take this and we're going to tie it off very very simple how many people just don't know how to tie knots the, these days i mean a simple knot that we're going to tie here is going to be a granny knot right on the end of this okay we're going to get enough string on both sides kind of even it up right there okay so nice and even we're going to go as tight as we can to here and we're going to do a granny knot just like tying your shoes just tying a knot i'm going to make a loop i'm going to pull it through the loop just like so just like that and that is my granny knot and that is our float that's our float for <laughs> our apparatus here i'm going to run it right through the middle of that okay i'm leaving a little bit of string here on the end because we may need a little bit more string you know what i'm going to do i'm going to take this and i'm going to tie another knot right in the end of it same way just a granny knot just as if you had one piece of string tying a knot on it we're tying one more granny knot. This is paracord. It's tough as ugh, tough as nails. See that loop? That loop's gonna make us happy here in just a second. Let's go over here and we'll hook it to the intake for our ram pump. What's to stop this pond from getting a lot of water flow and, and letting that ram pump intake wash through the pipe? What's to stop that? Well, in my hand is what's to stop that. I had an old piece of chain, just an old rusty, crusty piece of chain that I've had for, an, gosh, it was given to me by the man I bought my property from. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go about four rungs down and this chain is going to secure our filter, our intake filter. And the way it's gonna do that is it's just gonna drag the bottom, okay? It's something just as simple as this heavy chain dragging the bottom. Once again, I'm not tying a granny knot in this one. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get dirty showing you too, but that's all good. I'm gonna tie a fishing knot in this one. I call this a fishing knot. You guys can tell me what you call it. Let's get it a little closer. So this is how I tie a fish hook onto fishing string. I take my two strings, that's the end. This is the other part. I'm gonna wrap it around one, two, three, four times. I'm gonna go back in, back in through the loop that I made and in through this next loop. And it makes kind of a slip knot, okay? That knot will not break. That is a very good knot. And that's how I tie my fishing string on, cool? Now, we're gonna chuck this guy out in the pond along with our filter system. Now, how long does the string need to be? The string doesn't need to be short. It doesn't need to be any particular length. It just needs to be long enough um, to where it'll drag the bottom. So we'll chuck this as hard as I can out into that pond. And uh, we're, we're gonna tie this onto our other paracord. Paracord's super handy to have and it's cheap, way cheap to have around the house. Same knot, once again, remember the loop that we just made after I dropped this? <laughs> remember the loop that we just made right here? Well, we made the loop for a reason. The loop is to hold this guy. We're gonna do the same exact knot that we tied this to the chain with. So if it snags on something, we're gonna go one, two, three, you, uh, you seamen, you seabees, or you, you uh, navy guys, tell me what that is. Is that a clove hitch, half hitch? What do you call that? Uh, I was an electrician in the Air Force, and we had to learn all these knots, but I do not recall the name. Basic seamanship, okay? So, now, we're ready to go with this. We're going to take this portion right here, and we're going to zip tie it to the pipe with our zip tie gun so it's firmly attached now time for the sling <laughs> and then we got to siphon water i got to taste what this pond water is uh the the delicious flavor of the pond water okay there's our weight our anchor and we'll go anchors away one <laughs> i hope i fall in that'd be so funny one two bonsai we got to pull it back out. It did not go the way I wanted it to. It needs to go out in the pond a little further. Oh, <laughs> there we go. She's a rock star, dude. She's right there. She's perfect. So now I got a siphon water out of here. It's time for the sunglasses to come off. 
we got to go down in the woods to the ram pump and see if we can get it cycling it's going to take a while to get this thing cycling because it's got to build pressure as it goes up the hill and the fence line is just right here see the pipe and right through here right through the creek way on down here and here's our ram pump looking all sad down here <laughs> It kind of washed down the creek and we got a little bit of a water hole now. But this is the end that we're worried about. We're going to attach that. That's the drive pipe. I've got to draw water through that drive pipe. I'm going to have to come back and secure this a little bit better once we get this thing pumping and thumping. This is what you want your YouTuber to do, man, to get down in the creek with you. Okay, this pond scum is nasty. And I see something missing that's extremely important on our ram pump. And that is, man, it's not gonna work today. We're gonna have to get it in the morning, but we're gonna get it started today. There's a rubber piece missing right here. There's an O-ring missing. Oh, bummer. Anyway, we'll get the siphon going anyway. This is gonna be gross. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> I sucked a booger through. We got water already or something yeah that's what i just oh gross that's what i just tasted it's all right it's organic i just sucked through some something that a swamp rat might eat here we go oh she's coming i believe i got it oh yeah this is what we want we want it to start coughing water and slime out of here let's try it again <laughs> look it's all over me <laughs> ah, country living good clean dirty country living <laughs> a little trick you can shut this off oh it's coming <laughs> If I put my finger right here, I could, there it is. Ugh, ugh, guys, I just drank that. Oh, that's so nasty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who needs X-Lax? <laughs> oh, it's gonna be clear as a bell in just a second. This is called a union. And we're missing the rubber uh, gasket for our union. Total bummer, dude. You can see that water pressure really goes up. We may get flow here. Never seen it do that. This is doing this because that O-ring is missing. It just won't run. So we'll see you guys in the morning after I go to the store. <laughs> All right, guys, it's the next day. We're trying to be really, really quiet. So we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna set everything up for our water tank right here. And the basic synopsis behind this is the overview is I'm just gonna zip tie this uh, pipe system and I'm gonna put a T in right here. I've got all my parts ugh, right down here. I'm gonna put a T in because I know I'm gonna be running on down the fence line for putting up some more pipe. So we're gonna cut the pipe right here above this tank and we're trying to be quiet so the cows don't come over here. And we're gonna put together this little giant uh, automatic float valve. These things work awesome. I was using the Dare brand, but I can't seem to find the Dare brand out there on the web. This is about 20 bucks and it just fully automates your system. So what we're gonna do is take this apart, assemble it really quickly. Uh, it's very simple to assemble. You don't even need me to show you, but here's the basic gist of it. There's a picture. It just hangs on the edge of the water tank and it'll slowly fill it up. We have the O-ring to fix the ram pump, but first we're gonna set this up. That way it starts pumping water and we don't wanna attract the cows to this tank because they can knock the tank over. This will probably fill this 100 gallon tank yeah, within about two hours, okay? A lot more flow in this system than in the system down on the other side. And we're just about done with that. That thing is pumping water. Gosh, I don't, I don't even, I'd have to count how many feet it's pumping water. Eventually, both these systems will feed this entire 25 acre area off of a $200 setup. So $100 for one pump, 100 bucks for the other pump, or even 70 bucks for the other pump. Um, 
It's an inexpensive way to do this without power. So let's get her all hooked up and we'll show you the end result. Over we go. This goes to the tank. This goes on down the line and we're just gonna put a piece of pipe on here and we're gonna cap this piece of pipe. Now's your opportunity to make fun of my Crocs. <laughs> so to find an O-ring to fit this thing was like pulling teeth at Lowe's last night, but I finally found one that's gonna work for us. We're gonna get the O-ring in place and that's what was killing us. That was uh, ugh, absolutely killing us yesterday. Um, the O-ring I found is just a little bit too small, so we're doing a little manual manipulation of it, stretch it out just a hair before I put it in place here, and then we'll butt this union together and snug her down, just like so. That's what was holding us up yesterday. That prevented our ram pump from working. And I am rocking the Crocs down in the creek. And I'm fixing to rock the Crocs in a mud hole. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that little bit of pressure loss from that O-ring not being in place is what got us yesterday. O-ring's in place now. We're going to turn the water on. You should start seeing the ram pump try to cycle. Now, we have to build pressure up all the way from the pond to the level of the hose right here. So this might take just a minute. I brought my screwdriver down here, my trusty Klein 11 and one I don't want to dip my finger in the water. It's about 40 degrees. I'm going to get a little wet. It's all right. It's par for the course. Turn the water on. Cycled once. We'll just keep working with it. There it goes. Oh, come on, baby. I know you want to work. So what we're doing now is we're building pressure on the uh, pipe there, okay? Should start automatically doing this. And remember, there are different types of check valves, okay? This check valve needs to be just about vertical. That's it. She's working. That is a ram pump. Amazingly enough, it's just that simple to get the ram pump started. Now this thing is not securely mounted, so if we have a heavy, heavy rainstorm, we're going to have problems. So I just want to get it running for today to show you guys, and then we'll come down here and we'll put a little bit more of a permanent structure in place. Um, sometimes it takes some time, it takes 15, 20 minutes down here, just watching and babysitting, making sure that we're getting the right flow. Looks like it's doing great though. See? Okay, we're gonna go check the tank that we just put the valve on, and then we're gonna go down to the other ram pump. And we're not getting much flow out of the other ram pump pumping all the way up that hill. It's a lot of pressure to overcome. However, over time, that's what this is all about, storing water. So over the next 24 hours, the tanks will start to fill up and we'll have plenty of water for our cows on this passive system. Let's go up and check the tank. That's what we're looking for, guys. Water flow, that's it. Doesn't take much. About four hours and this tank will be plumb full of water. If we are quiet, the cows will stay away from the tank long enough for it to fill up. That little bit of flow right there is gonna fill this tank probably in three to four hours, something like that. That's a 100 gallon stock tank. And we've got several larger tanks that are on down the line here. And what we're gonna do is run pipe to all of those tanks all the way along the line right here. And that way we can section off and intensively graze our pasture. This is putting the ram pump into action on the farm and it works it's working awesome now it's going to cough out a little bit of air for the first little bit so you you know check on it the first 24 hours 48 hours and it's something you've got to check you know every day or every other day make sure you got to check your cows anyway so all it takes to restart that ram pump is just tapping that little valve and getting it to kick start again that's all it takes pretty cool let's go down to the one closest to the house and we'll check that one that one's pumping up a very very long distance this one's only pumping up uh, about 15 foot of rise and it'll cover this entire pasture the other one is pumping up 25 feet or more maybe 30 feet like I said not very impressive see that little drizzle what a cow can destroy it will destroy this cows up here there's a whole tub of water sitting right there 300 plus gallons of water and they're all over here with their tongues stuck out catching the little dribble of water 
and that's all it takes right there that little dribble of water will fill this tank up so i want to show you guys that it's not very impressive but it works so we'll put a tank here we'll have a tank way down the fence line over there and we will keep them full this is a hundred gallon stock tank we'll have a hundred and seventy gallon stock tank right over there and that ram pump that's way off down the hill nearly i'm going to say close to a thousand feet uh, nearly 10 rolls of pipe all the way up here from the pond way off over the hill is bringing this tiny amount of water and that's all it takes guys that's all it takes to slowly fill these stock tanks up and it'll keep these cows watered it's not about volume it's about storage okay it's about moving water and we do have a couple ibc totes so we may end up sticking an ibc tote up here and we'll tee off of this run to the ibc tote and we'll have water storage up here all the time so as long as water's moving water's not freezing this works guys i hope you enjoyed the video the cows have enjoyed the video <laughs> we're just having a good time out here on the farm there's so much to learn here guys please pound the like button jump in subscribe to the channel anything and everything that i can learn about raising cattle about farming about ranching about homesteading mechanicing any of that stuff we're going to share it here on the stony ridge farm guys thanks a lot pound the like button hope you enjoyed the video say bye to the cows anybody <laughs> see y'all take it easy Woo! give me a moo can i get a moo tough crowd we'll come on down to the stony ridge bring your wife and bring your kids we're living life pure and sweet that's the way it's supposed to be stony ridge Woo! guys this is oh <laughs> guys this is Fat Cat. Fat Cat. Fat Kitty. You need mousers when you have a farm. We've got five cats.